getting shot somewhere. Yeah. Um, so the fact that a bunch of other people have guns who aren't policemen and aren't uh, aren't criminals, uh, that seems to me more of a rounding error than a this is it, our civilization is collapsing. What? I, I got the impression talking to her that it's like, no, you're establishing for me that you're Adolf Hitler. Well, my uncle is a flaming liberal. I mean, he lives in Vermont. He He's a weird guy. He, he's a hermit who works in social work. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to laugh. Oh, no, no. We laugh at him, too. He laughs with us. He, okay. he, he, owns, he, he owns a house on the top of a mountain. The only way to get up there is on foot. There's no path. He had 40 different paths because he was getting kind of paranoid about people following him. He realized one day he's becoming too much of a hermit and got a job as a social worker. <laughs> this way he interacts with the public during the day and he goes home at night. And he was visiting and we were talking about guns and he's fairly anti-gun, but he did admit that he owns a gun he bought in 1956. He has no idea if it still works. He's not even sure where it is in his house, but he does know he has, you know, he does own a gun. And I'm going, oh, I didn't, you know, but then again... Back in the 50s when he was a teenager, buying a gun wasn't that big a deal because there weren't that many guns. And you lived in Wisconsin where, you know, you might have to shoot a deer that's in the backyard and can't get out. That's my my brother just shared on Facebook the other day a, a, a post that somebody made of social media has made too many of you comfortable with disrespecting people and not getting punched in the mouth for it. And that's I find a lot of the civil discourse or uncivil discourse as we're getting into boils down to th that concept of, you know, would you say that to your grandmother? 
like to her face, would you walk up to your grandma and say what you're going to post online? Well, then maybe you shouldn't be posting that online. That was somebody sent me a link to the Twitter where this first started to blow up. Of there's this per, person who is is anti comics gate, and the Rich Johnson on Bleeding Cool just did the the hundred power players in the comic book industry, and this person's number sixty eight, and Ethan's number seventy four, and you know at, in the ranking type thing, and I against my better wishes, signed into my Twitter for the first time in like four or five years and sent a message saying, I'm Matt Dow from a moment of service. 
the screen grab you have is from this post with a link to the post where it's from and there's more information on that post you know basically and you know trying to correct you know because it's well ethan's working with dave and dave's a pedophile well no dave's not a pedophile and technically they're not working together they're talking about working together you know, it, it, it's not like there's contracts signed and all of a sudden you're out of a job. It's, uh, hey, we're going to work together or we're not going to work together. And, you know, trying to trying to correct things a little bit. And it's just, and I started reading comments on Twitter. And that's, Einstein defined insanity as doing the same thing over and over and inspecting different results. I define insanity as reading the comments on Twitter. <laughs> only, only someone with a... Yeah, I don't think anybody actually... That's or whatever. And it's like, oh, pile on, pile on. It's, uh, you know, join the mob, uh, destroy this person. One of the comments was, well, service has, you know, service sucked ever since the end of church and state. And I'm thinking that's just over a third of the book. You're saying that Dave spun his wheels for 200 issues just to get the payday. I mean, I understand people read the book. They got to a point where they're like, this is no longer for me. And they walked away. That's fine. But then to say, well, you know, the book never got any better. Well, how do you know? You didn't read it. <laughs> you know, issue 285 could have been the greatest comic book in the history of comic books. You wouldn't know. You stopped at 111. Right, right. You know, I I try not to judge something unless I've tried it or looked at it. I mean, you know, there have been times where somebody's like, oh, you should see this movie. I'm like, eh, it's just not for me. You know, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't appeal to me. And, well, why won't you watch it? Because I just don't care about the subject matter. You know, it, it's a movie about high school football. I don't care about high school football.